Most people probably view their home as a sanctuary, somewhere they can go to escape the obligations of work and other people and just relax and spend time either alone or with their loved ones. But often, people have homes that aren't as safe as they would like in areas that put them at risk every single day. Whether they live in an area with a high crime rate or a high risk of being caught in a natural disaster. Watch this video to find out the top 10 riskiest houses in the world. Number 10. If you're in Wisconsin and you head for Lake Michigan, then you might happen to stumble across this bizarre house. The product of the rampant imagination of architect Harry Weiss. He basically got up one morning and decided that he was going to build a house that overlooks the lake, but a little bit too close for my liking. This house is called Shadow Cliff and was built in 1969. And it's more or less just a big rusty box made of metal jutting out over the edge of the lake with just a few metal beams for support. It's totally gotta be where Lemony Snicket got the inspiration for Aunt Josephine's house in a series of unfortunate events. Though as of right now it hasn't actually collapsed and fallen into the lake yet, but it's probably only a matter of time until the support beams rust away and whoever is in there is left hanging. Number 9 I guess architects really like to try and find physics by building things without any actual support. Number 7 So this is less one single dangerous house, but more a whole lot of dangerous houses. Basically the entire state of Oklahoma, and big portions of Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Texas. You may have heard this area of the Great Plains called Tornado Alley before, and it's a pretty accurate name, with tons of tornadoes forming there every year because cold air from the Arctic mixes with humid air from the Gulf of Mexico, and creates supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes. But the most dangerous area is apparently a suburb of Oklahoma City, where one nasty tornado in 2013 killed around two dozen people. Honestly, I'm not sure there are many places in the United States where you're completely safe from natural disasters. Number 6 When you think about monasteries built in tall, hard to reach places, you probably think of countries like China and others in the Far East instead of Greece. But Greece actually has some of the most dangerous and hard to access monasteries in the world. There's a collection of them called Meteora, which were built between the 14th and 16th centuries on top of a bunch of rock pillars out in the sea and over 1300 feet above ground level. They were built by monks tying ladders together and carrying the building materials and baskets attached to ropes. And I don't even want to think about how many might have died during the construction. Nowadays, tourists can visit Meteora via bridges, but they're still pretty narrow and dangerous, so maybe it's just better to take pictures from afar. Number 5 more or less anywhere you go in Europe, you're bound to find castles. In the countries where fairy tales about knights and princesses originate from, there's probably a castle somewhere in every major city. Germany is no different, boasting tons of famous castles, most notably Neuschwanstein Castle, which inspired the Sleeping Beauty Castle at Disneyland. This castle is called Liechtenstein though, and while it's famous to the German locals, it's not very well known to foreigners. For a castle, it's small and also pretty new being built only 170 years ago. But the thing that makes this place so risky is it's built right on the very edge of a cliff overlooking the Alps and has just one very thin bridge. Because of this, it's probably a pretty great fortress though, 
so at least there's a good reason for it to be built in such a dangerous place. Number 4 If you're in the southwest corner of the UK in Devon and fancy taking risks, then a boat ride to Eddie Stowe Lighthouse could be for you. This lighthouse is 8 miles away from the coastal city Plymouth and consists of the main lighthouse and a second much smaller tower. Between the towers is a tall reef which is submerged at high tide, meaning tons of inexperienced sailors have wrecked their boats in the past trying to sail between the two structures. When the tide is low in spring, the reef is so high you can actually walk across it to get between the two buildings. The lighthouse is also one of a whole bunch of lighthouses marking the incredibly dangerous Eddystone Rocks. And the original tower was also the first modern lighthouse to be built on a rock in the open sea back in 1698. Since then, four lighthouses have been constructed in this area, often suffering huge damages and having to be replaced. Being a lighthouse keeper is a pretty risky job. Number 3 Do you remember when I said that Nikolai Sutyagin was inspired to build his rickety Russian house by looking at similar buildings in Japan? Well, this could be one such building. It's a tiny house built by architect Teranobu Fujimori in the Nagano prefecture in Japan. It mimics the tradition of Japanese tea masters and their simple homes built in trees, and he built it entirely on his own. It's balanced only on two chestnut trees bought from a nearby mountain and you have to use narrow, freestanding ladders to get inside it where the interior is almost empty and covered just with plaster and bamboo. It's also called Takasugiyan, which translates in English to mean a tea house built too high. Number 2 We already talked about hard to access monasteries built in Greece, but the Hanging Temple in the Shanxi province of China could be what inspired the Greek monks to build their own. While Meteora was built 700 years ago, the Hanging Temple on Mount Hangshan was built during the Northern Wei Dynasty sometime between the years 386 and 557 AD, and it was also built by one man on his own, a monk named Lao Ran. It stood the test of time and is now over 1500 years old and you can still go visit it today. It's named the Hanging Temple because it looks like it's suspended from a cliff face, but it's actually held in place by a set of wooden beams inserted into specially carved holes in the mountainside and overlooks the incredibly deep valley below. Number 1 Whatever you were expecting to see for our number one riskiest house, it probably wasn't this. We're back in England again, but this time in London where one very angry hoarder is ignoring the complaints of his neighbors and a high court order to clean up his act. This house has been a blight on the local area for years, but only reached national newspapers in the last few months. It belongs to a 61 year old man who lives there on his own, and has built up so much trash inside the house he now uses two ladders to climb up into his home through the first floor window. Locals have made complaints saying that if his piles of garbage collapse, then the people walking underneath in this very busy area of London will get injured and may even get killed by falling debris. One man even said it looks worse than some of the most rundown areas he's seen in the north of England, back when Ireland was overrun with terrorism in the 1980s. It's only a matter of time before one man's hoarding addiction causes someone else to lose their life. 